So all of these things lead to a growing, I guess what you call, retreat from Reconstruction in Northern sentiment, in Northern politics. The abandonment, the final end of Reconstruction in 1877 is not just one moment. It is the culmination of a trend which is going on for several years in Northern uh, uh, opinion and increasingly um, in the Republican Party. Um, one illustration of this, which I talk about in my book, is the fate of the Freedmen's Savings Bank. After the Civil War, the federal government had chartered this bank, the Freedmen's Savings Bank, the first bank chartered by, the, by Congress since the Bank of the United States back in the early 19th century, to encourage thrift among the former slaves, the idea that they needed to learn, you know, the market values of wages, accumulation, thrift, and they set up branches all over the place. And even though it was a private corporation, it was not a branch of the government exactly, it was a private corporation with a board of directors, but it was most of its offices were in Freedmen's Bureau offices. It circulated, you know, portraits of Lincoln. It, it, it made itself seem like it was part of the federal government, certainly. And many, many African Americans and some whites put money into the Freedmen's Savings Bank, and um, uh, many organizations, churches, and others put money into the Freedmen's Savings Bank. Well. By 1874, it had over $3 million in deposits, most of them in rather small amounts, but it failed in the, in the aftermath of the economic depression, which began in 1873. Many, in 1873, many banks failed. They had, like many banks, even recently, had put a lot of money into mortgages, which were no good, and other speculative ventures, and they went out of business. They went bankrupt, wiping out the savings of countless former slaves. Now, many of them petitioned in Congress, there was an effort to take up the responsibility and reimburse the depositors in the Freedmen's Savings Bank. But this was long before the age of bailouts of banks. It wasn't 2008. They didn't, they never did bail out the Freedmen's Savings Bank. Into the 20th century, you have these petitions in the National Archives for people asking for their money back, former slaves, et cetera, a very pathetic kind of series of documents, but the fact that the Freedmen Savings Bank was allowed to fail was just another sign of this retreat from the principles of Reconstruction. Well, of course, um, in the end, of course, uh, the end, of, we don't really have time to go into this in any detail, but it's in the book, but in the election of 1876, where the, um, you know, where the Republicans nominate Rutherford B. Hayes of uh, Ohio and the Democrats nominate Samuel J. Tilden of New York. The end result is disputed. Both the, it, um, the result of the election hinges, here's a map of the election, uh, on who has carried these three disputed states, South Carolina, Florida, and Louisiana. The Republicans take most of the North, but not New York or Connecticut or Indiana. Democrats now control most of the South, Whoever wins the electoral votes of those three states in the South will win the Electoral College. There's a whole winter of uncertainty as to who will be elected. Eventually, um, since the Constitution doesn't say anything about how you resolve disputed electoral votes, uh, an electoral commission is set up. Congress, outside of the Constitution, sets up an electoral commission of 15 members, five Congress, five members of the House, five members of the Senate, and five members of the Supreme Court, 15, and it's to be divided equally between Democrat and Republican with one independent, David Davis, a Supreme Court justice who is neither Republican nor Democrat. He's an independent, and supposedly he will decide, really. But the Republicans in Illinois pull a fast one on the Democrats. They elect Davis to the U.S. Senate which is what he really wants to do. So Davis resigns from the Supreme Court, resigns from the Electoral Commission. They have to put another Supreme Court justice on. All the rest are Republicans. So now the Electoral Commission has an eight to seven Republican majority. And by some coincidence, every disputed electoral vote by eight to seven is awarded to Rutherford B. Hayes. And therefore he is elected president by one electoral vote. This is the first time in American history that the Supreme Court 
or if members of the Supreme Court chose the president. The second time was in 2002, uh, 2000, I mean, after the Bush-Gore election where the Supreme Court chose Bush as president. So it had happened before. But in fact, it wasn't just that. It was basically a deal was worked out in the secession winter between leaders of the Republican and Democratic parties, the so-called bargain of 1877. Or maybe one way to look at it is just the peace treaty ending the Civil War, finally. Leading Democrats, leading Republicans, North and South, had these secret negotiations and agreed to the bargain. What was the bargain? Hayes would be president, the Republican. A Southerner would be appointed to the cabinet, and that was a Tennessean who became key, who became postmaster general. Congress would give aid to a Southern transcontinental railroad, and federal troops would be withdrawn to their barracks in the South, not from the South. This is always said, pull out the South. No, federal troops who have been guarding the state houses in South Carolina and Louisiana to keep the Republican claimants in office would be withdrawn and would no longer take part in political action in the South. It's only later that they actually are removed to the North. But the main point is the federal government will no longer intervene in political affairs in the South. The Democrats say the rights of the former slaves will be guaranteed. So basically, the Republicans get the national government, the Democrats now get complete control of the South, and Reconstruction is over as a moment when, or a period, where the federal government has the ability and the will to intervene in the South to deal with political disputes, to suppress violence, and to protect the rights of the former slaves. Um, this is the end of Reconstruction, uh, but of course, as I've said before, some people now see it as a long Reconstruction, and it is absolutely true, and we will see in the next couple of sessions, not everything ends in 1877. Black voting continues in many places, black office holding, Republican voting in parts of the South, but as a period where the federal government exerts its authority to enforce the 14th and 15th Amendments and the Civil Rights Acts, Reconstruction comes to an end in 1877. So next time, in the next two sessions, the last two sessions, we will look at the new world that is created after the end of Reconstruction. Next time, the new nation that has emerged, and in Monday, the new South after the end of Reconstruction.